Every PIC32 microcontroller consists of a 32-bit CPU, flash program memory to hold your program, random access memory or RAM to hold your data, as well as a number of peripherals that allow the CPU to interact with the outside world. Examples of peripherals include analog inputs, digital inputs and outputs, as well as many different communication protocols. And these peripherals are what distinguish the microcontroller from just the microprocessor. There's many different models of PIC32s with different capabilities, but the ones that we're going to be focusing on is the PIC32MX795F512L. This particular PIC has 100 pins, starting at pin, pin 1 up here, going down to 25, then over to 50, and around. And this PIC is going to be powered by 3.3 volts. It has an 80 megahertz CPU. It has 512 kilobytes of flash memory. The flash is what's used to hold your program, and it's called non-volatile, so when you turn the pick off, you take the power away from it, the program remains. It also has 128 kilobytes of RAM, and RAM is what usually hold, holds your data during the running of a program, but when you power the pick off, that data is lost. It's also got 16 10-bit analog to digital conversion input lines that allow you to read sensors. So 10 bits means it can read values between 0 up to 2 to the 10 minus 1, or 1023, so you can read 1,024 1, different analog voltage values at the analog inputs. It's also got many digital inputs and outputs. It's got five pulse width modulation outputs. Pulse width modulation is basically a pulse train, a digital pulse train of varying frequency and duty cycle that you can set, and you usually use pulse width modulation to drive motors, for example. It's also got five 16-bit timers. And the 16-bit timers can be used for timing operations or for counting operations. And it's also got many different communication channels available. Uh, examples of communication that it has are USB, RS-232, CAN or CAN bus, Ethernet. It's also got two protocols that you might not be familiar with if you haven't worked with microcontrollers before called SPI as well as I squared C. Now to get this much functionality on a single chip with only 100 pins, many of these pins have to serve multiple functions. And here you can't see very well yet. But each of these pins, or almost all of them, can serve several potential functions. Let's zoom in on pin 78 up here. If we look at pin 78, it looks like it can be OC4 or RD3. OC4 is the same thing as pulse width modulation, pulse width modulation channel 4. Or RD3 means digital input or output. Okay. So this pin can serve either one of these functions, and it's up to us to decide. And the way we decide that is by writing a value into what's called a special function register. or just SFR for short. We're going to be seeing special function registers over and over again as we use the PIC. So for example, for this particular pin, there's a special function register that we write some bits to that will turn off, and for example, turn off the PWM function, and another special function register that will turn on the digital I.O. 
and also choose whether that pin is going to be an input or an output. So we'll see special function registers over and over, and that's what allows us to choose the different functionality of our many pins available.